Welcome back, this is John Knight from the University Skills Academy and we're going to continue with our time management. So today's chat is about exactly how much time we have and how we spend that time. So looking at the spreadsheet in front of me, and this is something I want you to do once you've completed this video, either with a scratch pad or an Excel sheet or whatever you do your maths with. Let's just see what we have. So everyone has 24 hours in the day to start with. So before you take anything away, you're left with 24 hours. And that means there's 168 hours in a week. If we sleep for eight hours a day, that means we're left with 16 hours per day after sleep and 112 hours per week. If you have to travel an hour each way to and from where you're studying, there's two hours a day in traveling and we have 14 hours left or 98 hours per week left over. If you spend 20 minutes at each meal, three meals a day, then you're losing an hour a day to eating. You're down to 13 hours a day or 91 hours per week. Hygiene, stuff like showering, washing your clothes, ironing your clothes, doing a bit of housework, whatever. An hour a day, you're down to 12 hours per day or 84 hours per week. Now, roughly, this is just a round number because strictly speaking, it should be 0.6. But it's just a bit awkward to talk about. If you do half an hour of exercise per day, you're then down to 11 and a half hours a day or 80.5 hours per week. So at the end of the day, just by living and traveling and doing all the stuff that you need to do, you're down to 11 and a half hours a day or 81 hours per week. Introduce something like a full-time job or full-time study at eight hours a day. You are now left with 3.5 hours per day to anything else above and beyond life in general because life costs us 11 and a half hours a day, study or a job, and let's face it, they're the same thing because you've got to treat your study like a full-time job. You're left with three and a half hours to do other things or 25 hours a week. Now, three and a half hours mightn't sound much, but 25 hours a week is quite a bit. So in summary, life consumes 12 and a half hours a day or 88 hours per week. Study consumes eight hours a day or if you're working, this is if you're working a seven day week, 56 hours a week. Time left after life and study is three and a half hours a day or 24.5 hours a week. Right, that's, uh, that's actually quite a bit of time if you've got more than a whole day. Now, what does this work when we are actually applying this to a genuine study scenario. So say you want to work five days a week. It seems reasonable. Eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Life costs you 88 hours. Life and study cost you therefore 128 hours. You're left with 40 hours per week or 5.7 hours per day. Now, that's quite a bit. 40 hours a week, admittedly the bulk of that would be Saturday, Sunday, there's still quite a bit of time there. You can do a lot in 40 hours. If you're really going to push hard and work seven days a week, though I wouldn't recommend it, your study is going to cost you 56 hours. Right? Life is still going to cost you 88 hours per week. So life and study cost you 144 hours a week. You're left with 25 hours a week that's three and a half hours a day again there's still a lot you can do with that yeah uh, a tidy marathon runner can can knock out a, a marathon there in three and a half hours now a few things to consider here a lot of institutions nowadays say that full-time study should be 10 hours per subject full-time study requires about four subjects so that's 40 hours a week so 10 hours per subject Four subjects, studies 40 hours. Okay, it all matches up with what we're looking at here. Right, so you're left with a little bit over about six hours a day or 41 hours a week. Now, another way to look at it is if you 
let's just explain the 10 hours. If you have four hours contact time per week in a class and you're applying the 10 hour rule, it means outside of class, you are expected to spend another six quality hours in that subject. So that will include things like preparing for lectures, reviewing lectures, writing up your lecture notes, answering tutorial questions, prepping for assignments, answering assignment stuff, those sorts of things will be consumed by those six hours. All right, there's another way to look at it. Some places say that rather than 10 hours per week per subject, that for every hour of contact, you need to be doing an extra three hours non-contact work. So if you have four hours per subject and four subjects, in total you're looking at 64 hours a week. So if life costs 88 hours and you're working in your study for 64 hours, that's 152 hours a week already spent. It leaves you two hours a day. That's a reasonable amount. That's a reasonable amount. In fact, I dare say, because those numbers don't add up, so just under two and a half hours, that's why you get your 17 hours. Back in ancient times when I was having my first attempt at university, you know, I had to write my lecture notes on a wet clay tablet and a sharpened stick. They were advising us, that's the academic powers of B, that we should be doing four hours for every hour of contact, and we had in excess of 16 hours contact. So in round figures, right, say we had 16 hours only, that's an 80-hour week, including class time. If life was costing 88 hours, um, in fact it didn't because we were stationed in a place where you could walk to work, it wasn't an hour's commute, so there was you know, an hour and 40 per day saved. On these numbers, we were spending 160 hours a week, leaving us 0.07 a day, a half an hour a week. I would suggest to you that that is not sustainable. From here, what I would like you to do is to go through this exercise and write it out yourself. Let me just give you one other thing. Given that this is almost unsustainable, what if I just did the bad thing and took away one hour's worth of sleep a day? Well, all of a sudden, I've got a working day left over at the end of my week, haven't I? That starts to become almost worth consideration if you really had to work hard to get through some things but again I wouldn't recommend it but look at this on the three hour rule you've got a whole day left over on the 10 hour rule you've got two whole days left over at the end of the week just for whatever sound like there might be room for a part-time job or a sport or a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever worth considering please go and do this exercise in your own time and have that exercise done before you look at the next video Thank you for your time. This has been John from the University Skills Academy and we'll see you in the next class.